In this video, we're going to be looking at variable acceleration. Now, this topic is a follow on from SUVAT. So I hope you've done my video on SUVAT first. Now I'm calling it SUVAT, but the actual topic is called kinematics. So go ahead and do that. Another topic which is very important that you must know before doing this video is differentiation and integration. So if you haven't done either of the two, make sure they're done first or you'll find this video difficult to understand. OK, so let's make a start. Now, I want to take you back to GCSE. So in GCSE time, you must have done velocity time graphs. And those two very important things you needed to know about velocity time graphs. One is about the gradient of the velocity time graph and one is about the area underneath the velocity time graph. Now you should have said the gradient is always acceleration. So for the velocity time graph, the gradient is always the acceleration. And the area is the displacement. Of course, if you look at speed time graphs, you'll just say the area is the distance. But displacement and distance in many cases are the same thing. It's just displacement can be negative, but distance can only be positive. So what we're about to discuss all revolve around these two things. OK, so let's say we've got the velocity equation. And of course, it's in terms of T. Now, we did say the gradient is the acceleration. Now, if you've watched my video on differentiation, the gradient is the differentiation of the graph. So basically, if you differentiate the velocity, you do get the acceleration equation. So dv dt, or you can say f dash t, is acceleration. And that's because whenever we're differentiating, we're working at the gradient function. So it's just an extension of something you knew from GCSE. You knew the gradient of the velocity time graph was acceleration. And we also said the area underneath the graph is displacement. Now, area underneath the graph comes from integration. Remember, we used to integrate to work out areas underneath curves. So if we integrate V, we should get displacement. So integration of V with respect to T is, of course, S. S, which is for displacement. So for starting with S, we can differentiate that and we get V. ds dt equals V. And then we can differentiate that too. And we get A dv dt equals a. So from s to get to a, you just keep differentiating. However, if we start from a to go backwards, remember the opposite of differentiation is integration. So if you're starting with a, you integrate to get back to v. Of course, we don't quite get v because remember you get that plus c which you don't know. But you get a general equation for v. And if you integrate v, you get displacement. So if you're starting with A and you keep integrating, you'll end up with displacement. OK, so let's look at this question here. We've got an equation for displacement in terms of T. And we need to find the value of A when T equals 2. So we're looking for acceleration, but we've got the displacement equation. But from the displacement equation, you should say that we can get the acceleration equation. How do we do that? Of course, we differentiate it to get the velocity equation and differentiate that and we get the acceleration equation. So let's go and get that first. So what do we need to do first? As I mentioned, you need to differentiate this to get A first. So like I said, we need to differentiate it twice. Once to get V and then differentiate that to get A. Now, I'm going to give you a chance to differentiate the S, ds dt, to get V. And I'm assuming that you're good at differentiation. So I'll give you a chance to do that and I'll show you what the result is. And this is what you should have got. ds dt, which is differentiation of s, is 60 squared plus 60 plus 1. And how we're doing that, if you look back at the s, you're just times in the power by the number in front and reducing the power by 1. That's just simple differentiation. Now we need to differentiate this again to get acceleration. So pause the video and try it yourself. And this is what we should have got. Acceleration is simply 12t plus 6. 
So finally, we've got the acceleration equation. Now, if we look back at the question, it says find the acceleration when t equals 2. So we just need to put t in as 2 and we'll get our answer. And putting 2 in, we get 13. So that wasn't too bad. Okay, so take a moment to read this question. So we're given an acceleration equation, a equals 3t squared plus 5. And we also know the particle starts at rest. Now that's a key piece of information. What it's saying is when time equals 0, v equals 0. At rest means it hasn't got a velocity. And we need to find the velocity when t equals 5. Okay, so we're given acceleration. Now to get to velocity, which we need to work out, we need to integrate. Now there's a problem when we integrate, you get a plus c. Now that's when that key information comes in. It, it told us initially it's at rest. So it's given us a set of values when t is zero, v is zero, and that's gonna help us work out c is, and you'll see in a moment how we do that. So let's go ahead and integrate. If you haven't done integration for a while, you just simply add one to the power and divide it by the number in front. So for example, we've got 3t squared here. The power 2 will be increased by 1, making it 3. And that 3 will divide the number in front, which is also 3. So it'll be 3 divided by 3. So I'll give you a chance to integrate this equation. And I'll show you the result in a moment. OK, so this is what you should have got. And you can see we've got a plus c here, the constant of integration. But remember, we know when t equals 0, v equals 0. From that statement, the particle starts at rest. So we can plug those in and that will allow us to solve what c is. So we put v in a 0 and t equals 0. And if we simplify that, we get c equals 0. So now we know the velocity equation without c in it. And we can answer the question. Find velocity when t equals 5. So we're just going to put t in as 5. You probably don't need a calculator to do this. And we get v equals 150. Okay, so in this question, we're given the velocity equation of a particle, and we need to find the minimum velocity. Now, minimum and maximum values of a function comes in differentiation. So if you remember back to differentiation, you've got an exercise on this. And the key fact is, functions have a maximum and minimum value when the differentiation of the function equals to zero. So we need to differentiate this and equal it to zero because we know it will have its minimum or maximum value when the differentiation of the function is equal to zero. Of course, in this case, we've got a velocity equation, so the differentiation of it is acceleration. So a key point here is velocity is at a maximum or a minimum when acceleration is zero. So we need to find out when this is a minimum and we're going to differentiate it. And you should have no problems doing that. And we get 40 minus 8. Of course, our original function will be at minimum when this, what we've got here, is equal to 0. So we've equaled it to 0, and we're just going to simply solve what t is. And we get t equals 2. And you shouldn't have any problem solving that. So when t equals 2, velocity is at a minimum. But we haven't yet found the velocity, and we need to put this 2 back into the velocity equation. And if we put the 2 in here, you can put this in the calculator if you like we get velocity as 2. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.